Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. This is just a short little video that is uh, out of band from the regular schedule, but uh, I thought I'd just uh, make a small video about something that uh, has irritated me and uh, that is uh, chips with uh, bent legs or pins that doesn't fit into sockets. So the problem with the ICs that haven't been in a socket before or you buy new is that uh, they can get hard to fit into the socket and also if you have uh, bent pins like this I usually have to use uh, some pliers to try and bend them. I usually use these, these are bent needle nose pliers. and. Uh, yeah, try and straighten them or if it doesn't fit in the socket at all I sometimes have to bend all the pins at once so I use a little bit of force like this but uh, yeah it can be hard to get it uh, to fit correctly and when you then push it in sometimes a pin or two just get bent underneath and uh, you risk uh, breaking off No, of course there are tools for that. I have seen other YouTubers use the, this tool here, for example, which is a, a simple tool for uh, bending or straightening all uh, the pins on uh, IC at once. And these are quite cheap, cost like a uh, hundred uh, nook or something like that, maybe 15 to 16 dollars including shipping, but since I am quite cheap at times, I don't want to spend money that I don't have to spend. So I actually checked if I could uh, 3D print one of those tools and uh, yeah, let's take a look. So here I am on Thingiverse.com. Uh, this is a portal where you can find all sorts of 3D models that uh, creators have uploaded and uh, yeah, Everything is uh, downloadable for free, but you are, of course, uh, asked to give donations to the creators. So I search for IC pin bender, for example. And here we have uh, some of those. This one, for example. So here I uh, search for dip bender and uh, yeah, there's a couple of variants, but I thought this one looked uh, to be perhaps uh, the best. And it takes two sizes of chips, one on each side. So I'm gonna print that now, download. And then I just uh, load it into the Prusa slicer software. Slicer is a software that you have to um, use to produce the file that the printer actually needs because it can't simply print a 3D model or a STL file. It needs to slice it and that means that it makes the 3D model into these thin slices that uh, forms the basis for the print and each layer that the printer is gonna print. So you can select to do a fast print that's not that accurate or you can use a very fine print 0.10 millimeter detailed or ultra detailed but I'm just gonna select uh, 0.2 millimeter normal and then there's a lot of settings and adjustments but for simple models like this I suppose it doesn't need much if you have like advanced models that has uh, overhangs, of course the printer cannot print into the air, so you need to then add some support materials. But uh, it looks like this does not require that, so I'm gonna slice it now. And here we can see all the different layers, and if we use this uh, tool here, we see each layer. And you can run up and down 
and you can actually see that the solid blocks are not completely filled. They are made up of these mesh structures that saves uh, the material that you're printing. And we now see down here that uh, it's going to use 8.62 meters of filament and it will take around two hours to print. So now I export that G code and uh, save it and copy it to a memory card that I insert into the 3D printer and I'm ready to print. Now I could of course uh, have uh, connected the printer directly to the PC but uh, this is in another room and would require a long cable and uh, having it in another room I don't have to listen to the noise it makes if I'm <laughs> working on something else. These are the remains of uh, <laughs> the last print. Right now uh, the filament I have inserted is white so I'm gonna use that one. Before I start the print job I always clean uh, the print area. This is a metal sheet and when you start printing the printer heats up uh, the whole uh, heat bed sheet and uh, yeah to around 60 degrees celsius and it also starts heating up the extruder that uh, melts the plastics and uh, then it starts printing the layout and uh, off it goes. Just gonna select print from SD. So now it starts heating and it is uh, 22 degrees and uh, it is going up to 215 degrees on the extruder and 60 degrees on the plate. The heating goes uh, quite quickly, it takes a couple of minutes only. And it now displays here, total printing time is uh, 2 hours and 7 minutes. And there it go, and first it will print just uh, a little bit over in the corner to dispose of uh, the first plastic that are in the extruder. But before that it just uh, do a little bit of uh, measurement of the leveling of the heat bed. Now it prints that first portion of plastics just to get rid of what was in the extruder. And then it prints the outline of uh, the model that I'm printing. And this first layer is always important to get the correct uh, thickness uh, so that it sticks to the plate, otherwise it might uh, get loose under the printing and then everything will just get a mess. I always watch the first couple of minutes to see that everything starts out okay. So now it seems like it is uh, correctly printing uh, the first layer, so I'll leave it here now for two hours. All right, the print finished and uh, everything went okay and it uh, is looking very nice. And it works. How durable it is remains to be seen. It might happen of course that the plastic uh, will eventually crack but uh, then I can just uh, print another one. It's not been used that often I think. So let's check it out. I have a couple of uh, old uh, broken chips here and I deliberately bent the legs on these. Let's try this one. Maybe I overbent them a little bit. <laughs> that is perhaps a little bit too much. Yeah, that seems to work. Let's try this one. I have uh, bent uh, the legs a little bit outwards. The trick is to get an even pressure and even straightening on all the pins. 
and it actually seems to do a pretty good job at that. Let's zoom in. Yeah, does it now fit uh, right into the socket? Yes, it does. Very nice. <laughs> Here's a smaller one. Let's try that side. Yeah, it bends the whole row of pins evenly, but the, the individual pins are a little bent themselves, so... But uh, it fits right into the socket. These are unused chips, I think, and with new chips uh, they're always uh, bent quite a lot out. And doesn't fit right into a socket. The, the pins are too wide actually and that is um, the case here. I'm not sure if you can see it but uh, so to get it into the socket you need to bend the whole row of pins on both sides and that can be a little bit uh, tricky. So let's try this one then. Yeah, yeah, that works perfectly. Very nice. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm really pleased about that. This simple device seems to be working as uh, designed. All right, that was it for this uh, short video. A new tool in my toolbox. That's great to have. So, hope you enjoyed the video and as usual, thanks to my sponsors and to my Patreons. See you all, bye bye.